I want to thank you all for coming. You must eat heartily, for the table is laden and bound. Mr. President, I'm so honored to be able to be here and cook for you this spectacular feast that I have planned. We are most honored to have you here, Mr. Stabe, and look forward to the grand preparations that you are making. Well, you know, I was a little nervous because the legacy of your wife and your great hospitality is all over the land, so I have my challenge cut out today. Well, I'm very confident that succeeding generations will follow the example we have set. I'll hope so. Join me as we bring you a taste of history for Montpellier. In the philosophy of the 18th century, and surely right here at the Madison Estate in Montpellier, feasts would mean maybe 15, 20, up to 30 different dishes. So today, I have prepared a very aggressive menu that I could not possibly manage by myself. So I brought along my chef de cuisine from Philadelphia, a world famous city tavern, Chef Bill, who's gonna help me. Matter of fact, the first course we make, and I'm working on a forgotten dish, which is a veal kidney uh, that we serve in a Dijon mustard cream sauce. But before that, Bill, reach over some artichokes. I'm going to show you how you want to trim it. We know that uh, the medicines love the artichokes. For this matter, also asparagus. And the artichoke that we have, we just want to trim it really quick. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to cut off the top and the bottom. What you want to do, even if you cook it immediately, you want to take a lemon. And you just want to really quickly just put a lemon on the bottom and on the top. And then all you're going to do is just go right here. Be careful here. Boom. Voila. Bill is going to do that while I get started on the kidneys. Now, on the kidneys, the most important thing to remember, the kidney is covered in fat. Now, in the 18th century, this fat of the kidney, it was used for uh, rendering down to make kidney pies and many other great dishes. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to render down the fat as well because I'm gonna use it later for my Yorkshire pudding. You don't wanna discard the fat, be ashamed. So what I have, we have my spider here, and all I'm gonna do is put the fat right in the spider and render it down slowly. So the kidney, all you wanna do is slice it. But you see it has a membrane in the inside. I'll show you that here. But in a veal kidney, you don't really want to remove it. If it's too much, if it's too big, you want to cut it loose. The younger the calf, the better the kidney because it has only eaten uh, uh, milk. So if it's a purely milk-fed calf, it's one of the best ways to do it. Uh, Bill, you ready with the other chucks? Throw them in the water. Okay. Now, salt, pepper here. Take a nice quarter stick of, pe of uh, butter. Right, butter in the pan. You want to make sure you have heat. Have some garlic already chopped. Give me the onion, please. Onion already chopped. And now you just want to let this cook until your onions get translucent. This happens to be a cremini mushroom. Any mushroom would work. Could you use wild mushrooms? But of course, there is again no right or wrong. Now, you want to see what I'm doing here is I'm reducing the liquid from the, uh, the mushrooms. And slowly, the kidney cooks. Actually, this kidney is ready to be eaten already. Mm-hmm. Again. It's a very, 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 very beautiful taste. It's kind of forgotten in our culture for reasons I don't, I don't know. In Europe, veal kidneys are so precious that they get cooked table side in fancy restaurants, imagine, still to our day. You want to use a dry wine, like any kind of burgundy, and then we're going to get a cream, 40% butter fat if you can get it, or 60% even better, right of the dairy. The better the cream, the better the dish. For the mustard, I use exclusively a Dijon mustard. It has a nice tanginess and uh, gives a little bit of the spice into it. Dijon mustard. 
You can cut me a little bit of chive, Bill. Chives are right there. Or parsley. You can chop parsley is good or chop chive is good. Short of the chives and a little bit of the brown sauce, the first dish is actually ready. It didn't take long, but there's so much more to come <laughs> that we had to get something out of the way that was relatively quick. Okay, brown sauce. Salt. Oh, Dolly, you're ready for a treat. I tell you, there's something about the, the real kidneys and the mustard and the cream and the, the red wine is just absolutely spectacular. You know, many times we talk about uh, cast iron and, and, and Dutch pots that are so forgotten in our days. Look at that. You can really see how the Dutch pot is not on the fire, near the fire, and henceforth keeps on cooking. That's why when you see big outdoor cooking events, you don't have to be on the fire necessarily to get the heat. Besides, I know it tastes much better out of a Dutch pot any day than any stainless steel. That's me saying. <laughs> Walter, it's a pleasure to welcome you in A Taste of History to James Madison's Montpelier. My honor to be here. So Michael, why is Montpelier located so centrally in this unbelievable historical area of Virginia? Well, I think there's so much here, and I think an important part for Madison is the view from his own home. You're not only looking west at this beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains, but I think Madison is literally looking into the future of America. Now you're entering the Madison's drawing room, and this is where every guest would have been greeted. You notice here, this is supposed to be the first presidents of the United States, but there's one that has been skipped. We have President One, Washington, then Adams, Jefferson on the right. In the middle, Madison has not hung himself. He was the fourth president. Instead, he hung his close friend Monroe, who was the fifth president. Where did Madison hang his own portrait? Next to his wife, Dolly. And that also put himself in, in a corner. And more than one visitor commented that it showed not only Madison's devotion to Dolly, but his modesty. Now, if you look at the walls, Walter, you think that's an interesting pattern. But in fact, that's the raw plaster. We have launched a forensic process of bringing back the interior furnishings. We've labeled it the presidential detective story because we are literally cracking a case that's now 150 years old, which is what became of the furnishings, the wallpaper, the draperies that made this house so magnificent and so impressive when everyone came. So how during the Madison era this, was this room used, Michael? Well, this is where the Madisons greeted every guest who came. You know, hospitality of the time was that you throw your doors open to anyone, whether they're a, a, someone you know or just a passer-buyer. And they would have been greeted in this room, impressed by the splendor. But unless that person was a friend, a family member, or came with a letter of introduction, they didn't get past this room. And that's really how Madison kept the public part of his life separate from the private part of the home. Now you're a special guest, Walter, so we're gonna let you pass this room. Let's well, go to the dining room. My lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people, especially up north, don't know anything about Hop and Chan. But I learned Hop and Chan when I was working in Atlanta in my early days in this great country. But what I've discovered over time, I have my own very special recipe for Hop and Chan that I'm sure once the people here have had it, they're never going to go back to theirs. Guarantee you. Black eyed peas, but I make a rice pilaf. And then the other thing I do, I take the great Virginia ham that uh, everybody's so fond of and basically cut it into a small dice. So all you're gonna do is your leftover ham that you cannot finish, cut into small dice. Bill, put a half a stick of butter in my pan. Give me the onion and the garlic. So it's onion, it's garlic, that most people may or may not put in their happen chan, but I just love mine. You wanna reach me over the, the black eyed peas, Bill? Now, I will obviously admit that this particular recipe is not for everybody, especially not on a, on a small budget, because I have about uh, three pounds of uh, Virginia ham in there. But it's not about cost, it's about flavor. You see the black eyed peas? Look at that, how beautiful is that? And Bill, you wanna reach me the rice pilaf? So now what I'm doing, what you see, I put a liquid into it, I let it cook down. Remember when you make this dish, you wanna be very careful 
because the ham is salty, even so it's soaked for a long time, that maintains a lot of salt. But it's beautiful. Mm. As I said, I made my rice pilaf already. All I do, I put a little bit of ham in the pilaf too, not a lot. All right. Chef Bill has prepared me some thyme and a little bit of pepper. Remembering that I'm using blush peppers because in the 18th century we did not have yellow and green and red like we know today. It was a green pepper that turned out into a blush pepper as you got ripened. In France, thyme is used in many recipes. Now this recipe I have here is one, as I said, mentioned earlier, I cooked it many a times in Atlanta. Everyone has their own version, a little fresh parsley in there, and I think a little bit of chive, Bill, and we'll be done. We just gotta let the liquid evaporate down a little bit, making sure that's a meal in itself. I agree with you, it is a meal in itself, but today, cooking here for Darling James Medicines at Montpellier, that's barely the beginning of this fantastic feast. And Walter, this is the dining room, and one of the more striking things in here is the wallpaper, which we have just put up in the last month. This is a French-style paper, exactly the, the type that the Madisons were buying. That's one piece of a 231-piece set of china that the Madisons purchased from France. Now, Walter, if you were dining here for dinner, one thing that would have surprised you, given the standards of the time, is that it was Dolly who sat at the head of the table, not James Madison. He recognized that this was her strength, being the hostess, directing the service, keeping the conversation going, and he just turned that role, the, the social side of Montpelier, he turned over to her. Walter, you're now standing in Madison's library. This is a room he added onto the house when he became president, and it was filled with books. Madison's library totaled 4,000 volumes, and it was a working library because he spent his retirement years putting together a record of the Constitutional Convention. And Dolly helped him with the work. So it was really the two of them creating a detailed log of the speeches given, the decisions made, so we'd all know where our Constitution came from. We intentionally left this room this way to really explain to our visitors the very first step in the presidential detective story, which was the forensic restoration of the Madison home. And as you look around, you'll see um, the evidence that informed every step of the restoration, so you know how authentic it is. And you also learn how houses were constructed at that time, because it's much different from the way we construct houses today. The lath on this wall is original, and it shows you how, how the walls were created. When the plaster was applied, it was pushed on so that the pl wet plaster squeezed through and then slumped like fingers holding onto the lathing. And that was the first surface of uh, creating the wall. There were then two more coats, as many as two more coats of plaster, to give the finished, smooth, beautiful wall that was appropriate to the interior of the Madison's home. Now, right in this location, we found a, a candle snuffer, and it really tells us the importance of the mice of Montpelier in helping us to restore the home so authentically. We have found that the mice left evidence in the walls, and it ranged from things like a candle snuffer to pieces of fabric, upholstery, well, even wallpaper. And all of these clues are so important in helping us truly restore the decor of James and Dolly Madison as part of the presidential detective story. There couldn't be a feast here in Virginia if you wouldn't have a nice lake fish along with it, perch or catfish or anything that would have always been on the table. Today, in honor of uh, Dolly and James Madison's here at Montpellier, I'm doing a nice catfish. The only difference between my catfish and many other people's catfish that I marinate a little bit in a European way, which would have most likely not been uncommon right here in Montpellier. So Bill went out this morning, he caught a catfish already and filleted it for me. All I want to do is squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on it, and now comes what, what I think makes the ultimate flavor. Bill, do me a couple of strikes of pepper on there. And now the flavor that I think is the best is a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. And I think the Worcestershire sauce just gets a little flavor to it that you normally don't find. To keep my hands clean, 
That's why I have Bill here. Bill is going to pret them. Now the pretting is very, very easy. It's all-purpose flour. It is egg that you just beat and then in cornmeal. And then all you want to do, now obviously in the 18th century, if they had plenty of lard, they would have uh, most likely deep fried in lard. I'm using vegetable oil today, but really don't have to. What I am using is a technique known as the two-hand method when it comes to breading any type of uh, meat, fish, vegetables, whatever. I have one wet and I have one dry. Using my wet hand, I grab the, uh, the raw protein, and then using my dry hand, I'll go with the flour. Take the protein into an egg wash, back to my wet hand. Shake off the excess, then I go into the cornmeal, and now I go back to the dry hand. What this does, it prevents your fingers from becoming encrusted with little dough balls, which I'm sure everybody out there has experienced. A little bit of practice becomes second nature. A lot of people ask, when you cook on uh, open fire like that, how do you know the temperature is right? Because you don't have a thermostat control. A little flour in there, and if the flour immediately bubbles up, you know the temperature is perfect. Perfect? Perfect. So it means that my oil is ready. So now I immerse the catfish. Watch it. Depending how big your pot is, depends how much catfish or how much any kind of fish you're going to get into it. So this particular is a relatively small pot, so two of the big fillets would do the trick in there. All you want to do is cook them until they're golden brown. By the time the cornmeal is golden brown, your fish is guaranteed done. I know that some people who watch it down here in this part of the world will laugh and say, why does this guy got to show me how to cook a catfish? But be amazed. You'd be amazed how many people watching our show and don't realize. <laughs> Bill, let's, since you're the big fisherman around here. That is beautiful, yeah, Chef. Let's go get it out of here. Very careful. But let me just be the first to taste it. How's that, Chef? I don't get better. Mm. A great way to gain insight into how people lived is to study what they left behind. A very active project at Montpelier is an ongoing excavation of the grounds around the estate. Over the years, many fascinating pieces of evidence have been unearthed, which illustrate the Madison's love of entertaining and the good life that was enjoyed here by their friends. Friend, my pleasure. Welcome, Chef Walter, and I, it is. It's a pleasure for me to be able to show you some of the interesting finds that uh, both our curatorial staff and our archaeological staff have found as part of our uh, investigation about the Madisons here at Montpelier. You know, normally as a chef, I don't very often look at pork and plate. <laughs> so excuse me, <laughs> but uh, take me through it. This is spectacular. Gladly. Well, of course, Dolly Madison was very much known for her hospitality and entertaining here at Montpelier. This is a plate from the Madison's 231-piece French porcelain service that was acquired in France by Four Skippeth in 1806. Another great indicator of, you know, parties and entertaining here at Montpelier is this fragment of a champagne bottle. And you can see the fragment of the wire that would, of course, hold the cork on. One of the other things that I brought today to show you, Chef Walter, are some of the faunal remains that the archaeologists have found here at Montpelier. These are the animal bones that show them the cuts of meat that the Madisons were serving on the table. No, there's something very good about by looking at it in the past and then see did they eat mutton? Did they eat goat? Did they eat veal? Another interesting uh, object I brought today is a reconstructed wine bottle that's got the seal of James Madison Sr., President Madison's father. And then the other seal we have below this one is a seal from President Madison's wine bottle. James Madison once had said that he was really interested to find out how much wine it takes versus Madeira or Champagne it takes to get something inebriated. Now my husband once observed that champagne, while doing so much in favor of conviviality, nonetheless was more prone than any other wine to giving a headache the next day. And so he proposed an experiment that we should test how many glasses of champagne it took before it induced a headache. We did test his theory. Nonetheless, I think it improved conviviality greatly, and I don't think anyone had a headache the next day. Ben, I want to really thank you for the time you took. Thank you very much, Chef Walter. And it is, it's a very much an ongoing project, especially now with our presidential detective story as we're continuing to furnish the mansion and bring it back to its appearance of what James and Dolly would have recognized when they lived here.
I'm getting ready to finally put this great feast together. I'm doing a potato really quick, which is kind of an interesting potato because it incorporates field mushrooms like chanterelles today, and also a little bit of the great Virginia ham. So I already have a pan on the fire. I have the garlic in there, garlic and onion. I have the ham over here. We'll throw in the chanterelles. And then throw in the potatoes for me. Basically, it's gonna chop me a, a, a pepper. And while this is throwing it here, I gotta make sure my roasted vegetables don't burn. My beef stew simmered away the entire time. All I gotta add into is a few mushrooms and some pearl onions that I already kind of pre-steamed. All right, mushrooms in it. Got to simmer for a little bit, no time. Bill is giving me the peppers, put it in there. Put some blood of pepper, uh, ground pepper in there, Doc. Red wine to deglaze my duck. All right, put them under that. Stew them up. A little chive still here. It's back, Chef. Right, put it in. Chive and thyme and done. Stew up one more time. And it's all she wrote, Bill. It's still done, duck done, everything done. I had a great time cooking here at the lawn of Montpellier. But now, let the fun begin. Let's go upstairs and eat. You are most welcome here. Hey, most welcome. Mr. Most President, welcome. as I told you earlier, it's a pleasure to serve you my uh, specialties today representing the 18th century the best way that I know how for you. We're much in anticipation for that which you have to offer. So we start off with a beautiful standing rib roast. Look at that, very slowly cooked, beautiful. We obviously would never serve anything Virginia without a Virginia ham. I have my own, very own special hop and chan that you gotta try. I bought some salilan and anadama breads. I have a beautiful, beautiful beef bourguignon, since I know you will enamor me the French. We have some fried catfish and a sauce remoulade. We have beautiful Pennsylvania Dutch style noodles, artichokes, we have corn relish, and all this together represents the best that I know of to please you. I think it's marvelous. I want to thank you all for coming. You must eat heartily, for the table is laden bountifully. Oh. Oh. Oh.